Another one's quite funny and it's good to work with. I had a client that is a, a tutor. She she tutors kids and uh, she told me she had this one kid she's tutoring in maths and sometimes she wanted to get him to do an exercise or whatever the work was and the child would say, do I have to? And I loved that. Um, I loved her telling the story. I loved it especially because, well, it's almost like a cliche, but it, it's like a dated cliche. It's the kind of thing that you'd expect to see in a, a, a show that came out, uh, I don't know, 60s or something like that, where the kid's like, do I have to? But I also loved it because it kind of reminds me of the part in, of myself that is reluctant to do things sometimes when I when I have to do them. And I thought in a different way for the from the other examples, this is a good example of a phrase that can motivate action because when I am in that space, I can just uh, give my part, the give the part that doesn't want to uh a voice. Let that part be like, do I have to and then the same way that my friend will tutor her child and psychologically help them through the challenge of doing the maths problem or whatever that they that they don't want to do. It's quite an affectionate way to protest as well. It shows a certain level of familiarity and you know, it's almost like the child knows that a game's gonna take place there where he says, do I have to? It's cute. And and then she's going to be like, come on. Yeah, you know, if you want to learn, you've got to do the thing. So I can I, I can kind of treat myself the same way, which is when I have a do I have to moment, I can go, I can see myself instead of getting in a fight with myself and seeing myself as the problem, I can see myself as kind of cutely protesting. And then I can negotiate and treat myself like a cute little child. Come on, you know how important it is to record this podcast and uh, drag myself along. Uh, well, <clears throat> hopefully not just drag myself along, but go, I know, I know I have to do my homework, but at least I'm acknowledging and being affectionate towards that part of myself rather than um, the opposite spiral, which is when you kind of feel like you have to flog yourself. You're both the slave driver and you're also at the same time the slave that's being whipped. And neither role is fun. Like, it's it's not fun having to coerce someone to do something, losing your temper, getting frustrated. And it's also not fun being at the end, uh, receiving end of bullying to motivate your behavior. So I thought that was a pretty great wow moment, and uh, I feel like I can I can use the, the that, and and I even did try it out once or twice with some positive re- results. Hopefully, making the video, making the podcast reminds me to apply it more. So I guess the the point of this video slash podcast is: what are your handle words? What are your power phrases that actually motivate you you to act? What helps you change or motivate your behavior? Can you use any of the principles in these ones to find them? For those things, whatever they are, that you would like to see a change in behavior in yourself. And when you see that you are stuck in a situation or you need to motivate certain behaviors, um, can you take some time, right, Let's throw a time out here. Let's pause and say, can I discover, can I work with myself to find a power phrase that's going to help me motivate my own action? So that's uh, the idea for today. Until next time, be yourself, but don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.